Next up, we have Martin Truex Jr. And he drives the number 56 Napa Auto Parts for Michael Waltrip Racing. He currently has uh, one of the wild card spots. He's 14th in points, but he does, does have a win, and he got the win, obviously, at Sonoma, the last road course that we were on. So, Martin, talk about uh, your prospects for uh, trying to uh, win here this weekend at Watkins Glen. Well, definitely uh, excited to be here, obviously, uh, with what we did at Sonoma. Um, road courses generally are uh, ones that I always look forward to. Uh, and, and generally, I, I've always felt better coming here than I did at Sonoma. So uh, definitely optimistic about the weekend and know what we can do. And I uh, love racing up here. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this racetrack is, is really unique and uh, you know totally different than Sonoma. But a lot of fun to drive on, a lot of fun to race on, and uh, looking forward to having a great weekend up here. Questions now for Martin. We'll take some. If you have one, raise your hand. Start right here with this gentleman to the left. Uh, you've been coming up here pretty much as long as you've been racing. Uh, just why do you think people keep coming out year after year and you don't see big drop-offs like you do at other places? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, obviously a lot of great race fans up in this area. And, um, you know, that, uh, I mean, Poco's, Pocono's pretty close to here. But I think for the most part, this is, uh, you know, a huge event up in this part of the country uh, each and every year. And uh, I think there's a lot of passionate road course racing fans up in this area, and they come out to watch. So, uh I think we're we're definitely lucky and fortunate to be able to come to this racetrack every year. It's a great place to race. Uh, it really fits our cars well, I think, and um, you know it's one again that I really enjoy. And um, you know, been coming here a long time, like you said, have a lot of history here, and uh, you know, coming watching races here before I ever raced here for a long time. So it's always neat to come here, and uh, I can remember looking through the garage and seeing the the Cup guys uh, over there in the garage, thinking that uh, it was pretty cool. I was even able to watch them and and see their cars. So to be here today. Uh, and to be racing here again this year is, is definitely a big thing for me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool. Go ahead to the right, Bob. Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Um, obviously, Tony was one of your main competitors for Chase Spot, and um, he's going to be out for a while. How long after you hear news of what happened to him does it take for you to go from concern for him to kind of realization that it does – help it could, or could help you make the chase um I, honestly when i first heard about it i really didn't even think about the chase stuff i've really not been focused on points or or all that stuff i mean there's still a lot of racing to go i think my first thought was just that you know it uh, obviously was a was a bad break for tony um you know, hate to see somebody out there just just trying to have fun and do what he loves to do you know get hurt and have it sacrifice his his real job or his main focus, which is, is obviously a sprint cup car. So uh, I honestly didn't really think about it at first. Um, I just was thinking, you know, what, what, what he was thinking and uh, just kind of felt bad for him. So uh, obviously there's some implica implications there as far as, uh, you know, he's got one of the wild card spots and I'm not even sure to be honest, how the, how it all works out. I mean, if he comes back in a couple of weeks, you know, does he is he still able to get it? I don't know. So I hadn't really thought about it much, to be honest with you. Um, we got a lot of races to go. There's a lot of guys around us that can still win a race on any given weekend, and uh, we just need to worry about uh, our own deal and focus on on trying to get another win uh, and be consistent enough, hopefully, to get back in that top ten. Let's go right here with Lee. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Can, have you talked to your little brother at all about making his cup debut at Bristol? Because it was like uh, Finch said, he might as well just throw him to the wolves. And, <laughs> of yeah. course, if, if you're going to make your debut, that that's an interesting place to do it. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, you know, I think that, that he'll do a good job. I think he's definitely excited about it. Uh, I don't think he realizes yet just how difficult it's going to be. Um, we have talked about it a bit, and I'm sure we will a lot more in, in detail uh, as it gets closer. But... Um, you know, it's good to see him get an opportunity like that. Obviously, he's ha he's had a bit of a rough go at it the last two years or so, and uh, he's obviously performed well and, and has a lot of talent and, and feels. Feel, I feel like he can he can do the job. We'll talk we'll talk about it a lot, and uh, and I know he's really excited about it. So it's kind of like uh, I'm not really sure he knows what he's getting himself into, but. You know, there's other guys out there that uh, that I see, you know, doing the same thing and, and 
you know, racing out there, people he's raced with, people he's, uh, you know, been able to be competitive with before. And so I don't see it, you know, being a big issue. But uh, it's going to be a bit of an eye-opener when, when they drop the, the green in practice and, and all the cars are out there with him. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, honestly, when I first came there, um, you know, Marcus was there, Ambrose, and, um, you know, he really helped them elevate that program. They spent a lot of time testing different things. And, you know, road racers kind of have a different mentality when, when it comes about, you know, it comes to tuning on the car and the little things that you need to work on, transmission things and brake stuff. And um, he definitely really led us in the right direction without a doubt and as soon as I came there you know Sonoma had never been a really good track for me as soon as I went to MWR you know right off the bat I think the first year we were really fast we ran up front we led some laps I mean it's uh you know of course we won there this year but my numbers at Sonoma were terrible as far as finishes go but since I've been at Michael Walter Racing we've always been really really fast there uh, same thing here I've always had a good record here um, but I definitely feel like I've been more competitive, had more speed since it, and I've been at MWR. So um, I don't know what, exactly what it is. It's just our cars always seem to work well on road courses. Uh, we don't really put any extra emphasis on it compared to short tracks or flat tracks or road course or, uh, you know, speedways or anything like that. It's just that uh, I think you come back to these places year after year and a lot of the same things still work, a lot of the same ideas. You still approach it the same way. It doesn't change quite as much as you know intermediate track setups and things like that. So uh, we've just got a good package that's been working good for for a few years, and uh, we just kind of keep refining that and fine tuning on it. Let's go to Woody. Raise your hand, please, Woody. Woody came Motor Racing Network. Just wanted to look ahead to Michigan next week. Speeds have been way up. Uh, do you feel like that track is getting more of its old personality back now after the repave and just your prospects for, for that track? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. It, it, you know, it seems like the, the tracks that have the newer style pavement on them, like Michigan, you know, Kansas, that was just redone. You know, even, go, even going to Charlotte, um, you know, it was paved in like 07, and it really hasn't changed that much. So it's really hard to say what it's going to do. Um, you know, hopefully some, sometime in the near future, I'll get back to the old Michigan where you could run all over it and, you know, it gets really slick and it wears the tires out. Uh, I'm not sure it's, it's, it's quite uh, ready to do that yet, but it seems like, um, you know, even the first race this year, there was definitely more racing room on it than there was last year. Uh, it didn't take as long throughout the weekend for the track to come in. And, and so, uh, I think it's definitely getting some age to it. Some of that oil's getting up out of it and. Uh, you know, hopefully this time around, the groove will be even wider than it was last time, and we can uh, put on some great racing. Other questions for Martin? All the way in the back. Aaron McLaren with White End Syracuse. Martin, we've had a, a pretty wet summer here uh, in central New York, but it seems like uh, we've had weather issues for the race uh, the last few years. Is there another place uh, during the year that, you guys seem to have as much weather issues as we do here at Watkins Glen, unfortunately. Yeah, Pocono last weekend. <laughs> Seems like every time we, we go here or Pocono, it rains at some point during the weekend, at least once. Uh, it's frustrating because, you know, you get, you know, you get up in the morning and you're like, you know, you get in, mo in, your, in your race mode or practice mode and you're like thinking about, you know, okay, I want to get on the racetrack. This is how my day is going to be. And and then all of a sudden, you know, it starts to rain and it kind of throws you off. So you have to change all your plans. And, you know, I just hope we were able to get practice in today. Uh, obviously, we're only supposed to qualify tomorrow. Uh, but, but I do think we'll have plenty of time if, if we can't get in today, which it looks like it's clearing up. So we should be fine. But um, definitely a place you want to get some practice in and, uh, you know, work, work through the, uh, the things on the car you want to work on. And, you know, we've certainly got some things we want to try. And, uh, you know, these are... Road courses are places where you, you need to get in that rhythm. And, you know, if you don't get enough practice, sometimes it can be hard to do that. So hopefully we'll get some today. 